probably sitting there wondering, what in the world is Garrett saying? Well, that's exactly what it's like for deaf and hard of hearing students every day of their own lives. That's what they think every time a presenter's up in front of the classroom. So they think every time you call their, call their name, that's what they think really any time a noise is made. By a show of hands, and please put your hands up nice and high if you know someone who is deaf or hard of hearing. Take a look around. I too know someone who is deaf. The young man I know is 24 years old, tall, skinny, and smarter than one would expect. I actually had the opportunity to sit down with the young man's mother last week and ask her a couple questions in relation to the boy's needs. So starting things off simple, I said, please, Susan, describe your son in three words. Quick with her response, she informed me that her son is extremely computer savvy, big hearted, and determined. I actually had the opportunity to sit down with Brandon immediately after and ask him a few questions in relation to his own needs. So starting things off simple, I said, Brandon, please describe yourself in three words. He then went on to say what probably any of you would have said, handsome, of course. So then informed me he was only kidding and go on to say, I don't know, but I never give up. If you give me something, I would try it and keep going until I got it. I dream big about computers and that won't stop. After conversing with Brandon and his mother, it was of my understanding that there was one main contributing factor that helped Brandon achieve a long list of accomplishments. This one thing got him through elementary school and first learning how to cope with being hearing impaired. Got him through middle school and junior high school. It even helped his determined self become bar mitzvah and acquire a driver's license. This one thing helped Brandon walk onto the stage at the East Brunswick High School graduation in 2011 where he graduated with a 3.25 UPA. A 3.25. There are probably many of us in this classroom who would go to the end of the world to obtain a 3.25. So what was that one thing that helped Brandon achieve such accomplishments? It's called inclusion. Inclusion of deaf students refers to deaf students actually being placed in a classroom with hearing students. However, inclusion will typically involve a series of services including interpreters, note takers, teacher aides, and consultants. But these services are provided within the context of a regular classroom. So with inclusion, Brandon was able to receive some significant benefits throughout high school. One, Brandon interacted with the hearing world. He developed skills in the real world and learned how to communicate in the real world despite having a disability. Two, he socialized with the hearing world, developed skills in the real world, and learned how to operate in the hearing world despite having a disability and gain useful social skills. Three, he had access to academic, vocational, and extracurricular programs. By participating with the hearing world, Brandon was able to gain access to a wide range of resources that would help him physically, socially, academically, and emotionally. And four, Brandon was able to live close to home. In order to attend a school for the deaf, many students must live at the school. It's, it's too far away. But by attending East Brunswick High School, Brandon was able to stay right where he was. So you might be giving this inclusion thing some thought, and you might be asking yourself some questions right now, maybe negative questions. What if the student's isolated? Well, his or her peers just not include the student? Won't there be limited opportunity for direct instruction with the teacher? Or what if the school administration is just unsupportive? Okay, well, if you're asking yourself that, stop. I asked a question just a bit ago, and if you raised your hand, please raise it again. Would you choose to isolate that student just because of their disability? Would you not include that student and restrict them from achieving certain goals just because they couldn't hear? Would you turn down opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with a student just because they didn't hear every word of your lecture? Or would you be unsupportive of a student in your classroom just because they can't hear? No. Mainstream school teachers and administrators and, and students, just like you and I, we get to know the disabled person for who they are inside the body and not the outward disability. In case you were wondering what I said when I said silently up here in the beginning of my presentation, it was as follows. Imagine being in a hearing world, unable to hear. There's no hearing music, parents, television, radio, friends, teachers, sirens. There's hearing nothing, only yourself. That is exactly what it's like for deaf and hard of hearing students every day of their own lives. It's like having a huge brick barrier between you and the rest of the world. 
But with inclusion, we're able to knock down this brick barrier and create an environment where hearing students and deaf students alike can grow and learn and become adults. Ladies and gentlemen, that young man's mother I sat down with last week, well, she just so happened to be my mother as well. And that young man, Brandon, well, he's the best older brother I could ever ask for. And I'd be proud of all he's become. Thanks to inclusion.